because like let's say you didn't have the fingers right here. Okay, so the air comes out of here, it flows around, fills up the skirt, and now it comes down. And when it comes down out of here, uh, since there's weight pushing it down, the air is going to be forced to come out here. But let's say that, um, let's say this hole has like a lot of air coming out of it. So it's coming down, and now um, it, when it comes down over here, um, let's say it's in so much force, instead of coming directly out, it goes a little bit in, and then it, when it comes out, it goes in like a different direction. And let's say this one has like less force coming out, um, and then once again, like the same issue. But with these uh, fingers, now when the air comes out, it just doesn't go like in any like tangent direction, it goes in a specific direction, specifically outward, which is what you want. You want the air to come directly out. You don't want it hanging around underneath your craft. Because if it hangs around underneath, that creates like another like pocket of air, where now you're like, you're not on level anymore. You could possibly tilt it. So I mean, by lifting that thing. Yeah. And here, like a small, here's a, like a short video of like how a hovercraft is actually made. Mm. Did you forget to pay for virus protection for like the 30th week in a row? <coughs> it's switching time. Now that's a new entrance. Switch to built-in virus protection. Switch to Chromebook. A hovercraft rides on a cushion of air created by powerful fans. This enables the craft to travel over both land and sea. The concept actually dates back to 1870, but it wasn't until the middle of the 20th century that a British inventor perfected it and the idea got off the ground. This model of hovercraft is equipped with a single fan. It both inflates the skirt, lifting the vessel about 25 centimeters, and creates thrust to propel the hovercraft over virtually any surface. Production begins with a hull made of lightweight polyethylene. The fabricator installs aluminum skids on the bottom to protect the hull during landings on rough surfaces. screws plastic attachments for the hovercraft skirt into pre-marked positions on the hull. The technician drills 65 holes around the hull. The fan's air will pass through these holes to fill the hovercraft skirt. The hull consists of a thick hard outer layer and a low density inner layer that makes the material buoyant. It's what keeps the hovercraft afloat during stops on water. The crew now fastens the seat base and console in the front of the hull. Once it's secure, they fit the gauge panel in its slot. The team then moves to the back of the hull to install the drive belt, pulley, and the main drive frame. This pulley will transfer power from the engine to the fan. Once they've confirmed everything moves freely, they assemble the fan to the main drive frame with high-tension bolts. This duct will divide the fan's air into two streams. One stream will be directed under the craft to provide lift. The other will be rooted out the back to generate thrust. They now return to the cockpit to attach handlebars to a steering mechanism. The engine can be either a two-stroke or four-stroke, depending on the amount of power desired. They connect it to the drive assembly and protect that connection with metal casing. Once the engine has been bolted into place, they equip it with a radiator, an air filter, an exhaust system, and a waterproof box containing the electrical components. Then they connect the fuel tank to the engine and cover the engine with a polyethylene hood to keep it dry. They install seating, including a rear bench that accommodates three. Then the installer attaches two rudders to the fan duct. He links them with a the bar so they'll move in tandem. These steering points
parts are made of marine grade steel to prevent rusting. A quick check confirms the rudders are operational. The hovercraft skirt is made of the same material used on shoe soles, sturdy polyurethane nylon. They assemble the skirt to the hull in 65 different pieces. The worker loops each segment over a side bumper and secures it with a steel clip. He then attaches the bottom of each skirt piece to the little hooks on the hull. He uses plastic cable ties for this job, and there's a good reason. If the skirt becomes snagged on something, these ties will break and free that section. Then other parts of the skirt will balloon out to fill the breech and maintain the air cushion. And they also will have to replace the whole skirt, just the section that's been damaged. After a final inspection, they take this hovercraft for a test spin. They check the steering and overall performance and enjoy gliding on air. I still want it to be as a, as a way we can test the theory, but at the same time, yeah, that'd be cool that we can do that, but it sounds kind of doable. I want to I see where we can take it, how far we can take it, mm -hmm. and see how elaborate we can get with what we can come up with, you know? So... I like this one too. Yeah, I want... I'll yeah, because yeah. it's already time. Like Did you guys have to put that yeah, because if, if we're going to be investing in this, we, we don't want to make it as simple as just that, like just getting a piece, a cute piece of plywood tarp and then just putting a, a leaf board. We, we can come up with something really cool where we can have it do a purpose, which, you know, we, 
we can do it. We can start small, like you said, like a really small scale, and then see where we can move like I don't know something that weighs like fifty pounds. Or I don't know. Like it, as long as we know that, like, okay, what we the materials we use uh, was able to create that lift, and then we can move it around. We, like you said, you can remote control it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And I don't know. I was just thinking maybe I can just put my like put a dog on it and see if we can kind of like hover around <laughs> with the remote control. But like, it, it sounds like fun if we can do something like that where it can be a bit complicated and we can do the best time. So that we can not only uh, build our skills on this, but we, we can use that skill that we learned from, from this project uh, to the HVC. Because like you said, the concept isn't too, isn't too complicated. It's kind of straightforward. Yeah. It's just kind of just applying it. Yeah. So I want to get a little more complicated than just that, just to see how far we can go. And then see the flaws, what we're, what we're doing wrong when we're doing that complicated one. That's what I wanted to start mm -hmm. off with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if we see a complication and the flaws that we have in the hard design, then we could see if we can improve it and if we want also add on to it. Yeah. And, and for that, um, uh, like by this week, like, um, uh, like someone outside the club is getting a 3D printer, so and like he doesn't mind us like using it, like whenever. So okay. if we want to start like a, like, our, like a kind of small scale, we could like make like a make our model in SolidWorks. Like it could be as like complicated as we want, and then just test it out to see if that that can, that can actually flow. And then if that actually like lifts up, then we could possibly make it in a full scale. Because for for making the physical like structure, like the skirt is basically just a, like a tarp. Um, you could get like a big tarp from Home Depot. But the actual structure itself, um, like we, the only materials we really need are just like plywood, and like the insulation foam from like Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Like those are like the two main things you need. You, you create like a double layer, and so it's like light enough to flow. You create like a hollow on the inside, and it's like it's, you get pretty like detailed or like complicated with the whole design. Cool. Um, how should we go about it? Can can we do the design start? Like yeah. Designing soon or? Yeah. Uh, how do you think that the timing would be like to you want to just create a small? Oh, just start with the with the uh, design first and yeah, deciding what we want it to kind of look like. The shape. Yeah. Um, with with that, um, there's this site that's already made. Promoting our design too. <laughs> Auto mechatronics. Okay, so this site they have um, Arduino projects. Cool. Uh, you know they're actually bringing on the classes for next some um, next year, right? For oh, here we go. Oh, sick. So with this site, um, this guy has like all. Like everything ready. Like he, he has like what parts you need to buy. He has the SolidWorks. He has like the coding and everything. Mm -hmm. So with this, like we could take a look at this and make our own design based off of that, and just use like his uh, coding for the Arduino to actually make it our own like remote control version, so we can actually test it out. Cool. So we can come up with our own design and just use whatever he has to that code. Yeah. So we can control. So we can do multiple ones and have those drivers. Oh, 